our brains are wired for linear thinking in an exponential world, and it's causing us a great deal of strife. It yeah, I, it's understandable that we have linear brains. Why, why would it be anything other than that? Think of, you know, we evolve on the Serengeti or wherever, and you, you, know, you just don't want to be eaten by the lion. That's not exponential thinking, that's very linear thinking. Can I get to the tree before the lion but gets to that's me? That's linear, that's a linear that's exercise, linear. Yes. okay? Uh, the speed of the lion is not increasing, Yeah. all right? <laughs> Ad infinitum. Luckily. We'd have to have a different brain to understand that. Yes. So I, I don't want to fault us for thinking that way, but to have self-awareness can bring you great benefits mm. if you know in advance you have linear thinking. And probably the cleanest example of the failure of our brain to understand exponentials is the one that involves a lake, and there's algae growing on a lake. And you see it there, and you, and you see that the area of the lake covered by algae is like doubling every day. Like it starts out in a little patch, and you come back the next day, it's like twice as big, mm. next day it's twice as big. So that's that's kind of scary. That's classic exponential growth, a simple doubling. A doubling, doubling, yes. correct, correct. So now, so the question is, um, you're there and you go away for a month and you come back and the lake is half covered with algae. Your favorite lake, it's awful. It's half covered. So the question is, how much more time do you have to wait for the entire lake to be covered? And most, because okay, you all are smart in here, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> most people say another month. That's linear thinking. No, the entire lake will be covered in one more day with the doubling per day. And that's a, perhaps the simplest example yep. of this. Yep. Uh, another one is, there's an old story uh, in ancient China where there's a chessboard with 64 squares and someone I, I'm going to get the details wrong here, but there's someone who did something a favor for the king and the, or the emperor, and the emperor wanted to return a favor in advance, and uh, offered him. No, and the person said, "I want one grain of rice for every square on the board, but doubled for every square." And they said, "Well, don't you want these riches?" Then I'm, no, I want rice for every, and the king didn't know exponentials. <laughs> and so by the time, you can't reach 64, there's not enough rice in China. It's like, it's like a mound as big as Mount Everest. Yeah, yeah, it's two to the 64th power. Yeah. Uh, and so. Well, my, my favorite is with my kids, I, I did this with them, my, my two boys, I said, I'll give you, you know, do you want. But are they okay now? They're, they're fine. Okay. <laughs> they're fine. Good. It's like, it's like, would you, would you rather have. Me experiments on you. Your children, okay, would go. You rather have a mil would you rather have a million dollars now or a penny doubled every day for 30 days? And um, they actually got it correct. Nice. Yeah. Nice, yeah. After 30 days is more than $5 million. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's, it's definitely, you want. Although, you might not have the $5 million by the end of the month, and you take the million now and run. <laughs> you see? So, uh, oh, and by the way, the $5 million is what your payout is on the 30th day. Yes, you've accumulated If you, if you accumulate it all, yeah. you're up around 10 million. Yep. Okay, so you're out $10 million. I, well, it stays in the family though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this linear thinking, it's, uh, you said it gets us into trouble. No, it just prevents you from realizing a possible future that awaits you. And my, my, uh, my best example of this is in the year 1900, New Year's Eve, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, then a newspaper, well read. Brooklyn was its own town. Um, Brooklyn is the origin of the Dodgers, okay? <laughs> Just putting it out there. So, uh, it's 1900 and they did what anybody does at the beginning of a century. They wanna imagine what the next century will bring. Yes. Okay. And there's a whole pullout section where, where economists, politicians, scientists, engineers, they all proclaimed their, they all laid down their predictions for the future. Here's the most interesting prediction there. It is by the head of the New York Central Railroad, okay? 
So he's in the transportation business. At the time, think back 1900, sir, you were around in 1900, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be bragging about the zip code and not just accept <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, so, the, in 1900, there were steamships crossing the Atlantic in record time. There were, uh, you know, the railroads crossing the country. You can get to California faster than you ever could before. There were airships. There was, uh, the bicycle was perfected. Early uh, combustion engine. So he was riding high. Yeah, and trans he wrote. Transportation was moving. He, I see hey. what you did there. Thank you, thank you. I know you're capable of better than that. Uh, but we'll <laughs> <go>. <laughs> Exp exponentially better. Than oh, that. Okay, good. So. Here's what he said, and I quote, we can scarcely imagine that advances in transportation of the 20th century will be as great as were those in the 19th century. Whoa! Whoa. That has got to be the most boneheaded statement ever made by anyone ever, especially someone who's in the business of transportation. He could not imagine the airplane, which was three years later, he was, this was not in his head. That we were flying supersonic or going to the moon, okay? And so, and by the way, he's saying that in 1900, and by 1930, we had already crossed the Atlantic in an airplane that would be invented three years later. Life in 1930 would be wholly unrecognizable to anyone from the 1900. And this 30-year increment I got to thinking about 30 years. Yes. I was sitting in the library at Princeton. I didn't get my master's there, but I postdoc there. You postdoc so, yeah, there, okay. In there. So I'm sitting there in the library, the astrophysics library, which is like dying and going to heaven, because here's your favorite subject in this entire library just for that subject. Okay. <laughs> they decided to put our feature journal, the astrophysical journal, which was birthed in 1895, on one wall, okay, rather than on multiple shelves. So there they were, 1895, and when I did this experiment, it might have been 1994, something like that, 1995, and that was down over here. And I asked, it's one wall, all the journals of the Astrophysical Journal. And I thought to myself, I wonder what year the midpoint of this wall is. That would be the doubling time. That's a great question. That, the doubling time of published research. Simple question. Mm. Easy to answer. So I, I, doing this exercise in 1994, that's how old I am. So uh, when I was in graduate school. So coming out of, I was, no, I was in post there. So I found the middle of the wall. It was 1965, 30 years. I said, oh, that's interesting. What's the middle of the, 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 the of that point, of, of, of that, the points, before yeah. that? Yeah. What's the middle? It was 1930, okay? And the middle, so th this goes, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, it's doubling every 30 years. Now, of course, you can argue whether every published paper, is it, you know, is it exploratory? Is it a real discovery? Th that's a detail here. The fact is, we were doubling our output in astrophysics every 30 years. And that got me thinking, how, can we measure society that way? Yeah. And how would you even go about doing that? You can go to the patent records. I looked that up. You That's did. I report on it in the book. Patents, uh, they have a doubling time. I, it might have been 20 years, but it's, it's not 100 years. It's not five years. It's some low number of decades. But what's incredible was the consistency. Yeah, of it. the consistency yeah. of the doubling. Yep. The exponential. Yes. Okay. Now, I said, is there a way to measure this? I, I don't know if there's a way. So I just picked 30 years because it divides cleanly into the time frames I was looking at. And I said, let me start in the year 1870. So I was going to go there. And then I researched real hard what everybody was doing in 1870. And then I just went 30-year increments to 1900, 1930, 1960, 1990, 
2020. When this book was published. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the book came out in 2022, okay? Written in 2020. Yes, okay. conceived throughout that, exactly. Yeah. So, and I went into each time frame and lifted up what everybody was chatting about as their modern way of living. And their predictions, which they were absolutely accurate about. <laughs> Not, okay. So, so this became a highly illuminating exercise. So going from 1870 to 1900. Shall we? Uh, okay, uh, so I, I remember. I, I took notes. Oh, you took notes, yeah. yeah. What, what did I say in 1870? Well, let's see, we got the steamships. Yeah, steamships. We got the Golden Spike. The Golden Spike? The, yeah. So the railroad was first late. So people say, yes, oh my gosh, we can cross the country as, as a new thing to celebrate. We had the Orient Express. Orient Express across Europe. Right. Uh, 1880, Benz and the engine. Yes, the internal. So between 1870 and 1900, uh, the uh, internal combustion engine. Right. Yes. And the bicycle. The bicycle, the modern bicycle as we know it, was perfected. It's got somebody's name associated with it, which we've long forgotten. So that's another means of transportation that did not exist in 1870. Yeah, one of the things you point out that I think is so important to say here is that every age we think now is the most incredible time ever. Yes. Like yes. now is like... One of the great delusions of it all. Yes. Yeah, you say, oh, oh, my, oh, all the great discoveries happened while I'm here and while wow. I'm living. No, no, no. So, <laughs> so... If you plot an exponential, all right, if you plot an exponential, so time is on the x-axis. Uh, are we on a log scale or on a, on a linear, linear scale? Linear scale, have to okay. be linear okay. scales right. to see this effect. All right. Okay, so. Just checking. Good thing to check. Yeah. So the x-axis is time. The y-axis is whatever is the thing you're measuring that's changing exponentially. It doesn't matter what. If you plot it, it will look like it's mostly horizontal, and just in the last time frame, it goes up like this. And you're at the top of that because you're in modern day. And you say, look at all the new advances that just happened. Yeah. What, a, wh what a privilege it is to be alive today. We must right. be special. We must be special. So now what? This is a, that, that's the big problem yeah. of humans <laughs> thinking we're always special. So now, if you <laughs> truncate it anywhere, I don't care where, truncate it to like here, where you said that's pretty flat. Now replot it, it'll look exactly the same. Yeah. It's because the exponential of today tamped everything else down relative to it. Uh, you cut it off midway, that's the exponential uh, you uh, think is your special day. Uh, except where you were is now back down here, right? So if like 10 years ago, you thought you were at the top, and now 10 years later, that top is now back down here and you're at the top again. Correct, because it keeps ascending. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so this is another, what we, it's a delusion that we live in. I mean, I keep on thinking like now with, you know, with Starship and with, uh, with AI and with you know, humanoid robots. You're thinking you're living in special it's time. Like, it's like, my God, we must be in a simulation. Otherwise, how, why would we be alive right now? <laughs> so, th so that urge is strong. It is. And I recognize it. And I, I'm victim, I fall victim to it every now and then.